I'm reviewing over 70 Gravitrax add-ons from seven Etsy shops. Each shop owner sent me parts of their choosing for these reviews. I evaluate each shop's overall 3D print quality and then review each part individually. Parts get scored in four key areas. First, quality. This evaluates the part's fit, operation, build quality, and ease of use. Second, utility. How useful is this part in a marble run? Does it add new capability to Gravitrax that you didn't have before? Third, fun. This is the part's coolness factor and is my opinion of how much fun the part will add to your marble runs. Lastly, uniqueness. This doesn't measure how good the part is, but whether the part is an original design that you can't get anywhere else. A generic design that is sold by several Etsy shops gets a lower uniqueness score. Hi, I'm Chris. Join me on my quest to find the world's best 3D printed add-ons for Gravitrax Marble Runs. In this video, I review Etsy shop Shetland 3D. What do these parts do? Which are best? In the interest of full disclosure, please be aware that I received these parts for free from shop owner Mark for the purposes of this review. Today we're going to examine 16 parts from the Shetland 3D shop. Double helix, tunnel switch, three-way switch, star-crossed rails, large X-rail, wide junction rail, arch bridge, corkscrew, fast drop rail, cobra roll, twist, extendable dive loop, water mill, ball catch accessory, rotator accessory, and diverter accessory. You can buy these parts from Mark's Etsy store at this link. Note that many Shetland 3D parts can be ordered in a color of your choice. As part of the selection process in the Etsy shop, you will see color options that allow you to customize the parts you order. Let me start with a caveat. 3D printing is somewhat of an art. It's not just the design that counts, but how you print it. It can be difficult to dial in printer settings to get a quality print. Many of these shop owners are improving their designs and print processes over time, so the parts you receive may differ in design and quality from the parts reviewed in this video. Be sure to talk to the shop owner if you have any questions. I'm simply reviewing the parts I received at the time of this video. First, let's take a look at the overall quality of the 3D prints coming out of the Shetland 3D shop. Overall, the print quality is on the poor side. The typical part has lines, blobs, stringing, ghosting, and other surface imperfections. There were some very obvious instances of under extrusion, some scarring on the top surfaces, and overhangs were sometimes messy. But these are mainly cosmetic issues, and despite them, it appears a good quality filament is used, and small details like the ends of rails are sufficiently formed. The resulting parts are still sturdy and usable. The print surfaces often exhibited elephant's foot. I also saw some warping of corners due to poor print bed adhesion. It is my opinion this shop owner could see a good return for additional time invested to improve the print process. I'm giving Shetland 3D two stars for overall print quality. Now let's dive in for a look at the parts. The first part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the double helix. This is a cool add-on that merges two intertwined spirals. It takes in marbles from opposite sides and releases them 60 degrees clockwise. I noticed that it didn't quite line up height-wise with Gravitrax tiles. Using adjacent tiles that were five height tiles tall, the entrances of the double helix were about two millimeters too tall. Of course, this can be accommodated by increasing the adjacent tiles to five and a half height tiles, but I let the shop owner know and he told me he is going to adjust the design to align better with the five millimeter increments of Gravitrax height tiles. Beyond that, the part works well. Just make sure you fully insert rails into the exits at the bottom or marbles can skip off the track. The piece I received sat a bit loose on top of Gravitrax gray full height tiles, but lightly stuck to the black half height tiles. This add-on could be pretty cool for use in a marble race with two marbles. Here's my scorecard rating for the double helix. For quality, I give it three stars. Its operation is error-free and easy to use, but it doesn't perfectly align with adjacent tiles. Once the shop owner fixes the design, this should no longer be an issue. For utility, I give it four stars. This part gives you a new capability to put two spirals in a single space. 
For fun, I give it four stars. It's pretty cool to see two marbles disappear down the same spiral from different entrances emerging from different exits. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. There are several 3D printed spiral and stair step designs out there, but the double helix appears to be unique. The second part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the tunnel switch. This add-on combines a triangle switch paddle with a base that incorporates two marble drops that accelerate the marble out the exits. What's unique about this switch is that the marbles exit only 60 degrees away from the entrance. This means you can create much more compact switch layouts than any other switch I have seen for Gravitrax. Many times when building Gravitrax, I have found it challenging to fit switches with their entrance and exit rails in my track's building space. The tunnel switch, with its exits placed next to the entrance, create a new opportunity that did not exist before. The tunnel switch entrance is two height tiles high, so you do lose a bit of height using this switch. The operation of the switch was good. The marbles passed freely through the tunnels. One thing I noticed is that if the incoming marble has too much speed, the switch will bounce back to the same position, so it's best to use this switch with a slower incoming marble. The switch's three-way needle comes off freely, but this is also the case with the regular Gravitrax switch. Here's my scorecard rating for the tunnel switch. For quality, I give it four stars. It is easy to set up and use, and you don't have to worry about aligning the three-way needle. It works in any orientation. Its main limitation is you need to keep the marble speed slow if you want the marble to strictly alternate between the exits. If you don't mind some randomness in the outputs, you can use it with higher marble speeds. For utility, I give it five stars. If you want to fit a switch in a small board space, this is a great alternative. The outgoing marble not only exits next to the input, but it picks up speed from the two tile drops so you don't need to use slanted rails immediately after the switch like you often do with a stock Gravitrax switch. For fun, I give it four stars. It's a visually appealing alternative to the stock Gravitrax switch. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. As far as I can tell, this piece is unique to this shop. I haven't seen it anywhere else. The third part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the three-way switch. This add-on is similar to the tunnel switch, but instead of a drop to the exits, it has three openings for marbles on the same level, each positioned 120 degrees from each other. The openings work as both entrances and exits, and no matter which opening you use as an entrance, the marble will alternately exit the other two openings. It also works well at higher marble speeds because the exiting marble prevents the switch from bouncing back. The three-way switch needle is the same used in the tunnel switch and separates easily from the body of the switch. The marble slows down a bit when traveling through the switch, but with a strong input speed, you can use horizontal rails as both inputs and exits, allowing you to send marbles through the switch in any direction on the same track. Here's my scorecard rating for the three-way switch. For quality, I give it five stars. It works just fine as a switch in any direction. For utility, I give it five stars. The switch offers flexibility that you don't have with a stock Gravitrax switch. Sending a marble backwards through the Gravitrax switch can block the marble's path if the switch is not properly aligned. But with the three-way switch, a marble will always have a pathway through the switch no matter what position the three-way needle is oriented. For fun, I give it four stars. It's a visually appealing alternative to the stock Gravitrax switch. For uniqueness, I give it four stars. There are some similar designs that exist, including one on ebay.de. The fourth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the star-crossed rails. This is an interesting piece that looks like three short rails crisscrossed on top of one another. Its design is not six-way symmetrical, for two of the three rails have a little X pattern for their cross supports, while the third rail cross supports are solid. The star-crossed rails add-on works just fine and fits very snugly in the tiles around it. It can be supported on three pieces if you wish. You don't need to support it on all six sides. So this is a good option for a six-way intersection, especially if you want to put another tile underneath it. I think the part works best in the horizontal position, but if you support it on only three sides, you can also tilt the part. Here's my scorecard rating for the star-crossed rails. For quality, I give it four stars. It works just fine in any direction, but it's a super tight fit which takes some effort to insert all the way onto the surrounding tiles. For utility, I give it five stars. 
You can really pack a lot of action in a small space with marbles going in all directions, and you can place a tile or rail underneath it as well. For fun, I give it five stars. I'm envisioning a marble derby collision crash with this part. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. You can find six-way tiles, but this is the first six-way rail assembly I've seen. The fifth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the large X-rail. This part connects two long rails that are each three spaces long that cross in the middle. It looks well designed and the part I received had a better print quality than some of the other Shetland 3D parts. I like the gold color filament too. Of course the large X-rail can be used horizontally, but it is also easy to make one side higher than the other so a marble will roll down the rails. It easily accommodated a three height tile difference. Here's my scorecard rating for the large X-rail. For quality, I give it four stars. The X-rail works smoothly, but be sure to fully insert the rail ends or slow marbles may stop when entering the X-rail. For utility, I give it five stars. In a single part, it accomplishes what would normally require four short rails and a junction tile using Gravitrax parts. And like the star-crossed rail, you can build underneath it. For fun, I give it four stars. It looks pretty cool in gold, and marbles crossing paths is always fun to watch. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. It is a one-of-a-kind piece that I haven't seen elsewhere. The sixth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the Y junction rail. This part is a really interesting piece. It's like a two-way merge tile, but in rail form instead of tile form. It sticks really well to the tiles, as you can see, so it takes some effort to make sure the rail is fully seated on all sides. Because it has three attachment points, it can be tilted so the marbles roll downhill. And like the other two rails we just described, you can build underneath it. Here's my scorecard rating for the Y junction rail. For quality, I give it four stars. It works just fine, but because it fits so tightly, it takes some extra effort to ensure it is firmly seated. For utility, I give it five stars. You can do the same thing using a two-way merge tile so it's not giving you a new capability, but you can't build underneath a two-way merge tile unless it's on a clear platform. So the new capability the Y junction rail gives you is the ability to build underneath it. For fun, I give it four stars. Even though it does the same job as a two-way merge tile, you may like its aesthetics better than a tile. And for uniqueness, I give it five stars. It is a unique piece that I haven't seen elsewhere. The seventh part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the arch bridge. This is a piece that truly adds a great aesthetic to your marble runs. It comes in three lengths that correspond to the three lengths of regular Gravitrax rails, spanning one space, two spaces, and three spaces. I received the two space arch bridge to review. It really looks sharp on top of tall pillars, reminiscent of a railroad bridge over a gorge. I love how it looks and it works very well. It is a little involved to install, almost locking in place around a tile. The bridge only works horizontally. It isn't designed to be used at a slant. So be sure your marble has enough momentum to make it all the way across. The rail ends of the bridge are printed separately and glued into the bridge, which is a good design decision, ensuring the rail end details are well formed. Here's my scorecard rating for the arch bridge. For quality, I give it five stars. It fits well onto Gravitrax tiles and the marble rolls over it nice and smooth. For utility, I give it two stars. The purpose of this piece is not to give you a new capability, but to give you a purely aesthetic option to the standard Gravitrax rail. For fun, I give it five stars. I think the arch bridge looks super sharp, especially on top of a tall stack of height tiles. It reminds me of the rail bridges for trains, so I bet it would look neat sending a train of marbles over the top. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. It's a unique piece that I haven't seen elsewhere. The eighth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the corkscrew. This is like a mega version of the Gravitrax loop. It's truly a part with a lot of wow factor, especially in the gold color. It takes up two Gravitrax tile spaces, so it's quite stable. The corkscrew won't work with traditional Gravitrax marble accelerators. Three and a half height tiles and a straight rail? Nope. Magnetic cannon? Not even close. Long Bernoulli rail? Almost, but not quite. Maybe if you give the marble speed before it enters the Bernoulli rail, that would work. 
I recommend that if you buy the corkscrew, you also buy Shetland 3D's fast drop rail. It's inexpensive and provides the acceleration needed to get the marble reliably through the corkscrew. The long Bernoulli rail provides a 7 height tile drop, but the fast drop rail provides a 13 height tile drop and the marble exits with a lot more speed. With the fast drop rail, the marbles ran reliably through the corkscrew, and they exit the corkscrew with quite a bit of residual speed, so the marble can travel further down the track before it needs more acceleration. Here's my scorecard rating for the corkscrew. For quality, I give it four stars. It works fairly well and reliably once you get it dialed in, but you may find yourself having to fiddle with the fast drop rail to get everything working just right. For utility, I give it five stars. This gives you a new option for your Gravitrax marble runs. Though it's much like the looping extension, the corkscrew entrance is straight, so the angle of the marble when entering the corkscrew loop is more gradual when compared to the Gravitrax looping extension's angled offset entrance. For fun, I give it five stars. This is a part with a lot of pizzazz and wow factor. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. It is a Shetland 3D original and you won't find it elsewhere. The ninth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the fast drop rail. This rail drops your marble down 13 height tiles, accelerating it to even faster speeds than the Gravitrax Long Bernoulli rail, which has a 7 height tile drop. The one thing I noticed is that the fast drop rail didn't accommodate a range of heights like most Gravitrax rails do. It seemed to only fit well when the height difference was exactly 13 tiles. 12 and a half height tiles left a ledge at the top, which could stop an incoming marble. Here's my scorecard rating for the fast drop rail. For quality, I give it three stars. The part I reviewed had some stringing at the ends, but it works fairly well considering the rail's length. Due to the location of the rail's center of gravity, you may find the rail a bit unstable and prone to movement. You may have to fiddle it with the fit but once it's in place, it seems to work okay. For utility, I give it five stars. This rail gives you new capability to accelerate a marble even faster than the Gravitrax Long Bernoulli rail. For fun, I give it five stars. You can make a marble go really fast, not only for the Shetland 3D corkscrew and cobra roll, but for other tricks in your Gravitrax track. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is another Shetland 3D original and you won't find it elsewhere. The tenth part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the Cobra Roll. This is a showpiece if there ever was one. The marble flips up a loop onto a horizontal bridge, then loops down the other side. It's a cool idea with a big wow factor. It takes up three Gravitrax tile spaces, making it a very stable piece. When you buy a Cobra Roll, a fast drop rail is included because that's the only way a marble will have enough speed to make it through. Though you can buy the Cobra roll in a solid color, it really looks sharp in the more expensive gold and white. Like the corkscrew, a marble will exit the Cobra roll with enough momentum to travel down the track a while before needing a boost. You'll notice the Cobra roll has arrows denoting the direction of marble travel. This is because the Cobra roll is not symmetrical. I found I could get the Cobra roll to work in the opposite direction, but only about 40% of the time. To work reliably, you'll want to pay attention to the arrows. Here's my scorecard rating for the Cobra Roll. For quality, I give it five stars. The part I reviewed was one of Shetland 3D's better prints. It not only worked well, but it looked good too. Printing a curved piece like this is challenging and I expected to see rough surfaces at the overhangs, but the results were much better than expected, with surfaces that the marble traveled through smoothly. It's not perfect, but is really good for a part of this complexity. For utility, I give it 5 stars. This is a new capability for Gravitrax marble runs. For fun, I give it 5 stars. It's a fun, flashy, loop-de-loop -loop challenge. For uniqueness, I give it 5 stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design. The 11th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the twist. I think this is my favorite piece from the Shetland 3D shop. My first impression of the part was that it was boring and somewhat ugly, but the more I played with it, the more I realized that the twist is an amazing fusion of art and function. It really is a creative piece that can do some cool tricks, all while looking like a piece of modern art. The twist is a three-piece glued tunnel rail with a slotted opening that twists around the periphery from one end to the other. 
Additionally, there is an open slot on top. The part has some 3D printing challenges. The piece I received had some blobs on the outside of the two end pieces. There was also a random piece of filament that prevented the marble from rolling through, but that was easily broken off with a file. The part's rail ends are printed separately and then glued into the assembly. The twist is the length of a long Gravitrax rail spanning three tile spaces. So what can you do with the twist? Place the twist level and horizontal and I found that a marble rolled into the top from either side would drop into the twist and exit the opposite side. Because the top opening is scalloped, a marble dropped on top is self-centering and tends to roll into the twist even with no initial momentum. And because the inside tunnel of the twist is raised in the center, it provides acceleration to the exiting marble on either side. Adding a Gravitrax bridge above, I found that the opening is in just the right location for a marble to roll off the bridge and into the twist. This is a really cool combination. I was fascinated. Two marbles entering from opposite directions creates an effect similar to the Gravitrax helix, where opposing marbles miss each other and continuing travel past each other without colliding. It is possible, but not easy, to get the marbles to collide with one another. You can also drop a marble into the twist from a vortex, but it doesn't always make it in, and sometimes the marble may stall inside the twist. But a following marble often sets the first one back in motion. The marbles take a random path to one side or the other. With the twist in the horizontal position, it is difficult to get a marble to roll all the way through. The twist slows down the marble so much that even a Bernoulli rail didn't work all of the time. A marble cannon sometimes worked for me in one direction, but not the other. The easiest way to get a marble to roll through the twist is to angle it. Adding two and a half height tiles at one end lets the marbles roll downhill all the way through. The top opening still works when the twist is tilted, but if the marble has enough momentum uphill, it could stall inside. Increasing the tilt to three height tiles seems to prevent the stalling and made for some very interesting marble action. Here's my scorecard rating for the twist. For quality, I give it three stars. The part worked well but only after I removed stray filament left over from the printing process. There was stringing on the rail ends and I think the blobs on the outside detracted from its artistic beauty and sometimes the rail ends of the twist created a slight ledge where incoming marbles would stop if they were moving too slow. For utility I give it 5 stars. This is a new capability for Gravitrax marble runs giving you new modes to merge marbles together or have them cross paths in opposite directions. For fun, I give it five stars. I really liked the marble action I was able to get with this part. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design and it's beautiful. The 12th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the extendable dive loop. This part has a base piece that can attach to three different top pieces, a funnel, a loop with extendable entrance, and a four-way merge tile. With the funnel on top, you can use the dive loop as a launching piece to drop marbles into. Because of the location of the entrance, I was having a difficult time figuring out how to get the marbles to drop into the funnel. The entrance is halfway between tile spaces, so nothing in the Gravitrax universe is going to align with its opening. You can't position a vortex above it. I did find that using a trampoline with a green angled tile, I was able to bounce a marble into the funnel. With the four-way merge tile on top, you'll need at least two adjacent tiles to hold it up. Those pieces need five height tiles underneath to place the merge tile at the correct height. The merge tile takes all incoming marbles and routes them down into the base and it works just fine. With the loop on top, I found it fairly challenging to get things to work. First you'll need a fast drop rail to get the necessary speed. And the top of that rail must be raised 18 height tiles above the base of the dive loop. The extendable rail of the dive loop needs to be positioned just right or it can act as a stop to the incoming marbles. There is another version of the dive loop on the Shetland 3D shop with a fixed length loop and I'm guessing it will work more readily. I really had to fiddle with the adjustment on the extendable rail to get it to work when extended over two Gravitrax spaces. It was much easier to get working when retracted to span only one space. If you remove the extendable rails, the loop part has two holes in the entrance that can hold the end of a Gravitrax rail but I was having a hard time getting that to work. Here's my scorecard rating for the extendable dive loop. For quality, I give it three stars. I think the extendable rail makes things tricky to get working. I suspect the version with the fixed length rail 
will be more reliable and fun to use. For utility, I give it 5 stars. This is a new capability to make your Gravitrax marble runs more interesting. For fun, I give it 5 stars. It's an entirely new piece with never before seen fun. For uniqueness, I give it 5 stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design. The 13th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the water mill. This is one of the most unique Gravitrax add-ons I've seen. Marbles going through the water mill add-on are reminiscent of water falling through a water wheel. The water mill has an output cog gear that interfaces with three optional accessories, which we'll cover separately. The water mill I received was a prototype printed in a brown filament. If you order the water mill, you'll receive a green wheel as shown on the website. Marbles enter at the top, which is eight height tiles tall. The marbles turn the wheel while falling down inside. Marbles seem to exit at a decent speed, despite some of their energy going to turn the wheel and optional accessories. The operation was okay, but there was some friction inside that slowed the wheel down. The water mill covers two Gravitrax spaces. Two marbles can fit inside each of the wheel cups and multiple marbles can go through the wheel at the same time. When testing the water mill with the ball catch accessory, I found that sometimes the wheel is at a point in its rotation where incoming marbles sit on the edge of a divider between cups and the wheel doesn't rotate. This isn't a problem when using the water mill by itself, but the wheel can get stuck if there is more resistance like when the ball catch accessory is loaded with marbles. Perhaps if the entrance were designed so that marbles fell downward into the wheel cups instead of rolling horizontally into them, this wouldn't happen. Here's my scorecard rating for the water mill. For quality, I give it four stars. Its pieces seemed a bit loose, but it worked just fine apart from the unnecessary internal friction and occasionally getting stuck when used with the optional accessories if the incoming marble hits a divider. For utility, I give it five stars. This part offers new capability for Gravitrax marble runs. For fun, I give it five stars. It really is pretty neat to see the marbles power a water wheel. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design. The 14th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the ball catch accessory for the water mill. This accessory takes up a single Gravitrax tile space and has a vertical cogged disc that meshes with the cogs of the water mill. There is a gap in the disc. When the gap is aligned with a slanted track in the tile, marbles will roll through the gap. If the gap is closed, marbles will be blocked by the disc, waiting to be released. The ball catch accessory seemed to work best for me when it was raised one height tile relative to the water mill. The accessory works just fine, and even with several marbles stacked up, the ball catch had no problem releasing the marbles, unless the water mill's incoming marble hits a divider and fails to rotate. Depending on the location of the gap, you may need to send several marbles through the water mill before the gap is aligned and lets marbles through. Similarly, when the gap is open, it may take several marbles through the water mill to close the gap. It all depends on where the gap is located and how much the water mill rotates the ball catch accessory each time. I found that the ball catch accessory also seemed to work with one and a half height tiles underneath. Here's my scorecard rating for the ball catch accessory for the water mill. For quality, I give it three stars. There was some interference between the ball catch accessory and the water mill, with each trying to push the other out of the way a bit. I think the ball catch accessory base should be trimmed back so there is clearance between it and the water mill. Also the ball catch accessory was lopsided in its rotation and very loose and wobbly. Nevertheless it worked pretty well. For utility I give it 5 stars. You can use the ball catch accessory to stop and store balls and then release them which is a fun and useful capability. For fun I give it 5 stars. It's a fun and imaginative concept. For uniqueness, I give it 5 stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design. The 15th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the rotator accessory for the water mill. This accessory also takes up a single tile space and has a horizontal cogged disc that meshes with the cogs of the water mill. That disc is attached to a rotating cylinder with a slanted slot on top. On top there are three marble inputs and one marble output, and incoming marbles will either stop at the rotator or roll into it depending on the rotator's orientation. 
I found that it was critical to have the rotator accessory at the correct height relative to the water mill. Unfortunately, the part came with no instructions, so I had to fiddle with the parts to determine the best height position, and it wasn't immediately intuitive how they should best be aligned. The rotator is sort of a random catch and release mechanism. Sometimes it turns too fast for a waiting marble to fall inside, and then it's random how many times it will take until the marble will fall into the rotator. Depending on which input the marble takes, it may take a couple turns of the water mill before a marble is released, or it might take only one turn. So it doesn't release marbles predictably like clockwork, it's very random. The input slots grab the ends of Gravitrax rails tightly, which is a nice change from the stock Gravitrax tiles, but make sure you insert the rails fully for best operation. One fun thing that can happen is if several marbles are lined up at the entrance opposite to the exit, all of them might suddenly be released if the rotator aligns in just the right spot. The top of the rotator can hold two marbles at a time, though it generally seemed that only one marble at a time entered the rotator. The rotator can also get stuck if several marbles are lined up and there are marbles partially entering the rotator assembly. This happened to me more than once. It seems the rotator pieces sit together loosely and though they turn well with only a couple of marbles sitting at the entrance, there is binding when lines of marbles are pressing against the center rotator piece. I also had a marble get stuck at the output. Here's my scorecard rating for the rotator accessory for the water mill. For quality, I give it two stars. I honestly think this accessory could use another design iteration to ensure that balls enter and exit the rotator piece more reliably and that the part doesn't jam. I also think the base should be trimmed back so it doesn't press against the water mill. The small internal pieces are not glued in and the three pieces of the rotating assembly do not stick together. Any of these pieces can easily get lost unless you always keep the piece upright, something that most kids won't be careful to do, and if you lose a piece, then the accessory wouldn't work. Instructions are needed for the recommended number of height tiles to mesh the piece with the water mill. For utility, I give it four stars. You can use the ball catch accessory to randomly stop and release balls, but don't count on it to always work by itself. Intervention may be required if the water mill wheel gets stuck. For fun, I give it five stars. It is a lot of fun even if getting it to work is frustrating. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is a Shetland 3D original design. The 16th part I'm reviewing from the Shetland 3D shop is the diverter accessory for the water mill. This accessory takes up two tile spaces and links a vertical cog disc with a lever arm that moves up and down. Marbles roll down the angled track through the hole in the diverter arm when the arm is down. When the arm is up, the marbles fall into a hole and exit the side of the assembly. So in essence, the diverter is a random switch with one input and two outputs. It's an interesting design. The diverter design usually does a pretty good job of making sure the diverter arm is either up or down, but occasionally the arm is only partially raised, and a marble can get stuck until another few come and provide enough weight to fully pull down the arm. The diverter accessory worked best for me when it was sitting one half height tile higher than the water mill. The diverter accessory really did not mesh well with the water mill at first. Its bulky base was pushing the water mill off to the side, and the cog wheel of the diverter accessory was pressing too closely on the cogs of the water mill. This caused marbles falling down the water mill to stop because there was too much binding in the cogs. In order to get the assembly to work better, I raised both the water mill and the diverter assembly up one height tile, and that gave it enough play to release the internal binding. It just didn't work well with the water mill attached to the base plate. So my final configuration was one height tile under the water mill and one and a half tiles under the diverter assembly. Here's my scorecard rating for the diverter accessory for the water mill. For quality, I give it two stars. Like the rotator assembly, I think this accessory could use another design refinement so that it meshes better with the water mill. Its base should be trimmed back so that it doesn't push on the water mill. For utility, I give it four stars. You can use the ball catch accessory to randomly change the path of incoming marbles. For fun, I give it five stars. It is a lot of fun, even if getting it to work is frustrating. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is yet another Shetland 3D original design.
That wraps up my review of Gravitrax add-ons from Etsy shop Shetland 3D. Tell me in the comments which add-on is your favorite. To see all the Etsy shops I've reviewed so far, click this playlist. Subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified when I release other Etsy shop reviews of Gravitrax add-ons.